Hi, my name is Scott Berger, and I'm with Kane County's Office of Community Reinvestment. This video has been prepared with the help of Batavia's Community Access TV station, BATV, to assist you in applying for funding from Kane County. Every year, the Kane County Board allocates funding for a variety of projects aimed at improving the quality of life for our residents. In this video, we'll provide you with an overview of Kane County's Community Development Fund and explain the application process for the year ahead. The Community Development Fund was established in 1998 by the Kane County Board. It is funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development under the Community Development Block Grant Program, which provides funding to cities, counties, and states across the country to address local needs. The overall goal of the program is to foster viable communities by providing decent housing, creating suitable living environments, and expanding economic opportunities for lower and middle income Americans. The program has two overarching national objectives, to support activities that benefit low and moderate income residents and to prevent slum or blight conditions. Every project supported by the Community Development Fund must address one of these objectives. Additionally, projects must address a locally designated priority need. In our area, five priorities have been established and they are one, affordable housing, both the preservation of existing units and the creation of additional units, two, neighborhood infrastructure, which includes both surface infrastructure, such as streets, sidewalks, and lighting, as well as subsurface infrastructure, such as water and sewer lines, three, public facilities, which can include parks and community centers, as well as facilities owned by nonprofit organizations dedicated to providing services to lower and moderate income residents. Our fourth priority is emergency shelter services for the homeless and those at risk of becoming homeless. And finally, our fifth priority, planning and capacity building. This need is increasingly important as our area grows and continues to become more urban. The county provides community development funding to two types of entities. Applicants must either be incorporated as 501c3 nonprofit organizations or be a unit of local government and all projects must serve or benefit residents within the county's community development program area. This area includes all of unincorporated Kane County, as well as the 23 municipalities that participate in the county's program. It's important to note that three Kane County communities, Aurora, Elgin, and Hoffman Estates, have their own programs. If your project is located in any one of these communities, we would encourage you to seek federal community development funding first from those municipalities. Kane County's Community Development Program runs on a fiscal year that begins on June 1st and runs through May 31st. So the application cycle we're kicking off now is for funding that's expected to be available in mid-2013. Although we don't yet know the exact amount of our 2013 federal allocation, we're projecting up to $1 million will be available. This amount obviously could be less depending on the outcome of congressional budget deliberations. When we add another $50,000 in program income, from the repayment of housing rehabilitation loans, we project the county will have a total community development fund of $1.05 million for 2013. So let's talk briefly about the application process for the year ahead. To apply for community development funds, you will need to complete a couple of standardized forms and attach information specific to your project. Our application packet is a fillable Microsoft Word document you can download from the community reinvestment page on the county's website. And just a side note, when you click on the packet, you'll be asked to, to enter a username and password. Instead, just click on the cancel button twice and the Word document will automatically open on your computer. Please let us know if you have any difficulty with this. We're happy to provide the application to you on a flash drive. Once you have the application packet, you should begin by completing our standard two-page application form. The first section asks for some general information about your organization and the project for which you are seeking funding, including which of the five priority needs your project will address. The next section is for project funding. You'll need to in indicate the total cost of your project, the amount of funding you expect will be available from other sources, including your own funding, and the amount you are seeking from the Community Development Fund. This last amount is what we call the gap in your budget. This is the exact amount you need from the county to balance your project budget. 
so that if your project is funded, the total funding available from all sources will equal the total project cost. This section should match up with the detailed budget you'll attach to your application. We'll talk a little bit later about the budget attachment as well as the project timeline. Next, we need you to indicate how your project is eligible for funding. Will it benefit low or moderate income residents or eliminate slumber blight conditions? You'll see there are several subcategories within each of these. If you have any questions about which subcategory your project qualifies under, please let us know. In the case of area benefit activities, our office can provide you with the required benefit data from the Census Bureau or assist you with an income survey of area residents. Finally, we ask you to review and sign an applicant certification statement. Among other things, this is your promise that all the information included in and with your application is true and that you will let us know if any changes occur that might affect the outcome of your application. Next, there are five different questionnaires including, included in the packet, one for each priority need. We ask that you fill out the project questionnaire that corresponds to the priority need your project will address. Here, we're looking for information about whether your project is a collaborative effort with other organizations, its economic and environmental impacts, as well as how it might help improve the health and safety of our residents. If your project involves real estate development, we're also looking to see what form of site control you have and whether the necessary zoning is in place. Finally, you'll need to prepare a series of attachments to the completed application form and questionnaire. We need you to provide a detailed project budget that lists all hard and soft costs as well as funding sources. Also, you will need to supply documentation of the status of each funding source. This typically takes the form of a letter of commitment or award notice. We also need you to supply us with a timeline for completion of your project. And we want to encourage you to be realistic in this area, keeping in mind that because of the federal application and approval process, rehab or construction work on your project won't typically get underway until the late summer or early fall. Finally, we require evidence that your application has been properly authorized. So in addition to including a sample budget and timeline in the application packet, we have provided a sample board resolution for you to model yours on. We do realize all of these items are a lot to keep track of, so we've provided a series of checklists at the end of the packet and would encourage you to follow the checklist that matches your project type. And of course, submit your application by the deadline, which is Monday, January 7th. Once you submit your application, it will go first to our Community Development Commission, which is responsible for reviewing all proposals and recommending projects for inclusion in our budget for the year ahead. That budget goes to the Kane County Board for review and approval and is included in the county's annual action plan, which is submitted to HUD. Applicants that are approved for community development funding are expected to enter into what is called a subrecipient agreement with Kane County. The county is a recipient of federal funds, which makes all entities to which we provide funding subrecipients. The agreement outlines terms and conditions under which federal funding will be provided for each project. The agreement details various requirements, including bidding and procurement, which will affect any contracting necessary to complete the project, as well as reporting and record keeping requirements. It also covers the payment process, which involves reimbursing project sponsors for eligible expenses. A couple of important notes about expenses we can't pay for. The purchase of equipment and supplies is not eligible, and also building maintenance is not eligible. On this second item, we want to distinguish between rehabilitation work, which is eligible, and building maintenance, which is not. The difference between the two really comes down to whether or not your project involves a comprehensive rehabilitation of a facility or simply routine repair work of existing components of your building. If you have any questions about this, please don't hesitate to contact us. We certainly don't want you to invest a lot of time seeking funding for an ineligible project when there might be other avenues such as the county's riverboat fund for you to pursue. Also, we want to note that if your project involves the acquisition or improvement of any real estate, any community development funds we provide will be provided as a zero interest 20 year forgivable loan secured by a recorded mortgage. There are no payments on the loan and no interest accrues. At the end of the 20 year term, the loan is released. If for some reason you sell the real estate during that 20 year period, 
that was purchased or improved with community development funds, the loan must be repaid to the county. Should that occur, the repaid funds, which are still considered federal dollars, are recycled back into the program and used to finance new projects. The last thing we want to review with you are the evaluation criteria that will be used to judge your proposal. These criteria fall into four broad categories. First, we look at how well your project meets the housing and community development needs that we've already talked about today, whether it be housing, infrastructure, public facilities, etc. Second, we rate how effectively your project leverages other resources. Obviously, we only have limited amount of funding, and in order to maximize the benefit to our residents, we look to you to bring as much funding to the table as possible, only looking to the county to fill the gap and make your project a reality. Third, we look at how ready your project is to proceed. The federal government wants their funds put to good use quickly. Obviously, funding projects that really aren't ready to move forward means those funds will just sit in Washington, not benefiting anyone. To avoid this, we are looking to fund projects that will get underway sometime between the fall of 2013 and the spring of 2014. Finally, we consider the impact your project will have in the neighborhood or community. Will it benefit our local economy through job creation? Will it address an environmental issue or address a health or safety issue that is detrimental to the quality of life? These are the issues we consider when evaluating your proposals and projects that are the most responsive are generally considered for funding. So with that overview, we want to invite you to visit our website to learn more about the Community Development Fund and to obtain program guidelines, application materials, and fact sheets we've posted there. As you do so, keep in mind that we want you to have the strongest, most competitive proposal possible and are happy to talk with you about ways to achieve that goal. And lastly, we know that Kane County is fortunate to have both municipal and nonprofit partners with a tremendous capacity to improve the quality of life of our neighborhoods and communities. Our Community Development Fund gives us an opportunity to build on that good fortune. Thank you for taking time to view this video, produced with generous assistance from our friends at BATV. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you, and have a good day.